to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. Protonic reversal. Protonic reversal with your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rotten about music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though, if you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's all It means something. It means something. And they got away. You know, that's my take on it. Wait, what's yours? Protonic Reversal! That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed it is. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It is a scientific fact that we're all up in your face. It is time once again for the one, the only Protonic Reversal! Welcome to it, welcome to it, welcome to it. Episode 381. Very psyched to have Mr. Greg Norton of One Husker Du and also Ultra Bomb back. We've been tr- trying to do this for a while now and it's uh, it's, it's been it's been quite the journey, which you'll hear all about. But uh, let's just say a lots of occurred since then. So we're going to get into that. Before we do, welcome to Kona Neutron's Protonic Reversal. I'm your host, Kona Neutron. I'm a rock and roll lifer who's been touring and recording for 24 years, most known for the band Kona Neutron, The Secret Friends. Music is a huge part of my life, and he's the format of this very long-running podcast to talk about music with musicians whose work I enjoy and respect, but who may not be household names. This is episode 381. Now, if this is your first time listening to the show, archives are available for free. No ads, no sponsors, no kidding, at protonicreversal.com. However, if you want to support the show and get episodes sooner, $1 a month at patreon.com slash protonicreversal will achieve that goal. And if you like the show or even just a single episode, please feel free to like, subscribe on your platform of choice, share it around on the internet, or even leave a review. All that helps people discover the show. It beats back the almighty algorithmic overlords. That's just a darn nice thing to do. So yeah, it's been a little bit. I'm very excited to talk to this man. Uh, again, lots of stuff has happened since last we d- talked. Hello, Mr. Greg Norton. How you doing, sir? I'm doing. I'm doing great. How are you? We're, we're doing it. We're doing a show. Can you believe it? <laughs> Finally, <laughs> we've we've had a. Uh, th- there's people that I've gone back and forth with longer on, for sure. <laughs> but okay, but not many. <laughs> so all right. <laughs> Uh, a few things have happened since last we talked, haven't haven't we? Yeah, a lot of things, all sorts of things. Yeah, that's uh, I I I don't know where to start or where to begin, but I guess we can, we can start with, with the good stuff, which is that massive amounts of ultra bomb activity happening. Uh, that is correct. Now uh, you got this tour, and this is this is an honest to goodness proper tour with the uh, tour dates and everything. <laughs> tour dates and everything. Uh, we're the we're the bottom of the bill. Right. But uh, me first in the gimme gimmies and then the defiant in the middle. Sure. So um, it'll be it'll be fun. Well, but it's a it's that's a great opportunity to get out and and do it in a lot of different places. I mean, I know there's even some stuff. I think it's like Montreal and Toronto. There's some Canada stuff in there as well too, right? So that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting, and I've uh, never played. Uh, in Vermont or New Hampshire or Maine, so those will all be firsts nice. for me. And and uh, haven't been, uh, haven't played in Florida since probably eighty six or eighty seven. Last time Husker was there. So yeah, that's a pretty good Exciting stretch. <laughs> We're gonna hopefully have a few shows on our own on on off days. And uh, playing our way back up to Minneapolis, we're uh, headlining a show here on May 9th at the Hook and Ladder. Uh, so that's kind of our homecoming. That'll be the last date of the tour. Well, and and logistics are kind of crazy for Ultra Bomb, to put it bluntly, right? I mean, it's a multinational affair. There's a it, lot, it lot is. Involved. Yep, yep. Jamie's in London. Finney's in Toronto. I'm I'm here in Red Wing, Minnesota. 
So yeah, it's uh, just trying to even coordinate a phone call um, to to, um, work on logistics is tough. (laughs) Yeah, there's time (laughs) zones, right? I mean, like, look, at least you and I are in the same time zone, you know? (laughs) That's, we That's true. Going for. Yep. I, I yeah, actually, uh, I had Kid Congo Powers on. goes to their British summertime this evening, so then uh, right. Jamie will be Ugh. six hours um, difference. At least Fiddy's only an hour. I had a Kid Congo Powers on earlier this week, and uh, I forgot that Arizona, where he lives, does not observe daylight savings time, so I got kind of... Yeah, that's got correct. Yep. On that. and, uh, once I don't again, really need to save the daylight there. It's so plenty of bring it, yeah. on, Bring on the nighttime. Let, let it cool off. Right, right. Uh, but it's exciting because you you've actually because the last time we discussed I, I'm not even, I don't think I think Ultra Bomb was like maybe not even happening yet last time you and I talked on the air then uh, it was like yeah, either just uh, starting or like right yeah because we were just I think Ultra Bomb actually happened after that so yeah uh, we were we were still talking about. The Longhorn, uh, or the t- Who's to Do Tonight Longhorn yeah, record, so whenever that came that out, did finally come out, and uh, um, <laughs> actually, I got in a little trouble there because evidently I wasn't supposed to really talk about it. And uh, the Punctuation magazine out of England, like you know, read between the lines and figured it out, put out an article article going like, "Hey, look, new Who's to Do record coming out." And I'm like, "Ah, shit, oh, <laughs> Damn my it. bad." Uh, but anyway, that's that's all. Um, so that's almost three years ago. That's crazy. That's that's. Yeah. I mean, because that the the Savage Young Do it just sort of uh, that was still relatively new at that point. Uh, right. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, because I think we're coming up on. I think that's been out for six years now. Yeah. Yeah. That's oh my. Because Grant passed away six years ago. Man, and I that mean, came out a couple of months after he passed. So I feel yeah, like COVID so, time it could be so three yeah, weeks. Uh, so since we talked, then Ultra Bomb got together. I had a crazy idea to to fly to Berlin to meet those guys because I'd never actually even met them. Yeah, and we recorded the first record. We wrote it in literally two days, and then he took all you know all these lyrics I had and said like, "Hey, I've got the whole record figured out," and then. You know, we tripped ourselves up by thinking we could put it out ourselves. Um, it's a lot of work. <laughs> which, a lot of work, and, and it took way too long, and uh, I'm sure we pissed some people off, and I understand there's still some people waiting for records, which we thought uh, yes. <clears throat> had finally all gone out, so we still need to figure that out. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, and then... Um, Oh, and then I had uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Ultra Bomb actually played one show um, a couple of years ago uh, at the Hook and Ladder. And then the following week, I went in and had my prostate removed. And, and I'm much better now. Which is uh, great. Which is good. <clears throat> and then last May, we did our first proper U.S. tour, uh, played punk rock bowling, which was absolutely a highlight um life-changing moment type of type of deal yeah. and um mm-hmm. december we were over in england and on tour with the barstool, barstool preachers, preachers yeah. played a few shows on our own in europe and while we were there we recorded our second record uh which is coming out on dc jam records we've got a street worldwide street date of june 7th all right uh the records at the pressing plant and with uh, a little bit of luck, we'll have we'll have uh, uh, copies for sale on the road when we're out with the with the gimmies, and uh, we'll still have some time to burn LPs to to sell as well. And uh, the new record's called "Dying to Smile." Oh, uh, it's 11, 11 songs, ten originals, and I think it's better than the first one. Um, well, you're you're more used to being a band at this point, right? So it's, it would make sense, right? Yeah, I mean, the first one we had just literally met and then wrote a record, and it just yeah. really clicked. Um, I mean, to the point where we felt like we'd known each other and had been playing together for years, and now it, you know, at this point we had had been playing together for for some time, and 
so I think you know Ultra Bomb is is kind of finally finding our groove and 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 uh, stylistically and and musically and and uh, you know it's evolving, it's growing, it's getting better. So let's let's start there. I, I think too often press, which let's face it, unfortunately, I, I guess we have to count this show as press. Uh, focuses too much on origin stories to the point that it's like, oh my God, we get it, we get it. But I think that it's so interesting that you three wouldn't necessarily be what I would think of as like working so fantastically together, but it does seem to really work. How did it, how did it all come to pass originally? Uh, well, you know, I had been playing in Porcupine and then right. uh, that just didn't really work out. And Casey decided to kind of take the band in a um actually he like reformed the band completely yeah. with uh uh their their four piece now um uh, but you know it was his band and and i uh always felt that it was his place to tell people what was going on and he they went out and played a show and then all of a sudden people were going like well where's greg and where's ian and and uh and people were asking me and i'm like I don't, you know, it's Casey's band. It's, uh, you know, um, and then they put out like a big statement on Facebook and, yeah, and, uh, which was kind of, kind of an odd way to, to do it. It wasn't even Casey. It was somebody else in the band, but you know, like I said, it just didn't work out between Casey and I, um, which happens. I mean, there's no harm yeah, no that, foul. That happens, right? you know. Ian Ian uh is he's got uh, a couple of projects going on his own now too, which I'm uh really happy for him and but but anyway, um Finney who, you know, is uh, uh you know, he's had the the Mahones for 30 plus years yeah. and the man. way Finney and I originally um kind of became friends was was through Facebook Messenger, it's uh, he's like, "Hey, my band, the Mahones, did a Husker cover, and I hope you like it." You know, and nice. and uh, they, they did make make no sense at all, and and uh, so he and I just would message back and forth occasionally, and then when he saw on Facebook that that Porcupine was um, no longer uh, a going interest for me, he contacted me and said, "Like, hey, I got this crazy idea. Let's let's." start a band yeah. uh he's like i know the greatest punk rock drummer uh on the planet jamie oliver jamie, he's yeah. he's an old friend and evidently at the same time he sent jamie a message going like hey you want to start a band with Greg Martin?" <laughs> oh what an operator wow <laughs> right <That's awesome. laughs> so you know originally you know the it, you know what Finney was thinking is like ah oh, you know let's just get together and we'll we'll just uh, do some Husker covers some Mahones yeah. tunes maybe a couple of UK sub songs and and uh, you know just go out and play some festivals and just have a just good for time. a laugh type right, of thing right, right, sure and uh, so we're like you know all three of us are like yeah great let's do it you know it's like we'll figure out the logistics later and then um, September of um, that year. So that would have been 2021. September is when Finney's like, hey, I'm going to be in Berlin. Jamie's actually going to be here. I have like studio time booked and I've uh, been writing a ton of riffs type of thing. And that's when I'm like, I should go meet these guys. Right. Just, because to, of this just to see like if, you know, we get along type of thing. Yeah. And and that's how that happened. So, you know, it's it's it was crazy. Well, and um, it's a very modern story in a certain way, right? Like the whole remote collaboration thing, but it's very far afield from, you know, back in the day where, you know, whatever, putting up a a, a poster on the on the wall and with the, the tear off. What do you call it? The tear off tabs. Uh, right. <laughs> something yep. along those lines or like or worse, like, you know, uh, the classified in the in the paper or something along those lines. Right. Yeah. Looking for a bass player that loves uh that's into Husker Du and and uh, <laughs> Peter Paul and Mary. Right, right, right. <laughs> pro gear, pro right. attitude. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's it's it is a very modern construct. But so so is there a Rubicon that sort of gets crossed? Where like, oh, these guys rock. Like I I'm enjoying doing this. We're on the same page. Uh, or, or is it like something where it's like immediately, you just know that it's gelling. Uh yeah. I mean it it instantly gelled. It it. Um, 
I mean, you know, so we had a half a day in the studio. We we wrote four songs, and the the next day nice. we wrote another six, and they all just came together like so well. Uh, the Hansi, the the uh, the engineer in Berlin, he was he was like. I cannot believe that you guys just wrote that song <laughs> just right now. And, and right. I'm like, yeah, it's, as a matter of fact, I just met these guys, yeah. you know, and um, uh, towards the end of the session, he said, yeah, when Finney booked the, the time, he told me that you guys were a punk rock band, but you're much better than that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> right. That's the kind of thing you want to hear the compliment in for sure. But that's mm-hmm. awesome. <laughs> well, because there's a very easy feel to it. Uh, it, like it, if like I was actually kind of surprised to hear that that, that it came together the way it takes it. It sound it doesn't sound like it, right? And which I think speaks to all of you guys' credit as musicians. But it's got a nice like l- not lived in. Like there's so like that excitement of the new sort of thing. But there's a real yeah. nice energy to it that it's it's genuinely surprising. So it's it's a nice surprise. yeah. You know, it's it. Um, I mean. I, the first record there, there. I mean, plenty of people have, have said, you know, made Husker comparisons to it, but yeah. it's much more than that. You know, it's, it, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, my, my bass lines are, that's how I play bass. Right, so well, when people go like, oh yeah, it's great hearing those Husker bass lines. It's like, yeah, well, like Norton bass lines, but <laughs> thank you, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it's so, yeah, and that's the kind of thing that that's going to be hard to get away from, right? Because it's, it's, and but it's, it's fine to a certain degree, I'm sure, because, well, people love, love that. So it's like then it's they're hearing yeah. something that they love, and it's just, it just also kind of means that, all right, that's going to be in every sentence for forever and ever, amen, I guess. But, uh, you know, yeah, that's, yeah, you know, that, uh, the first song that Benny went in to, to sing was Time to Burn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh and I had to you know coach him and go like Finny, I know you fucking love Husker so much and you and Bob is like one of your heroes, but stop trying to channel Bob yeah, and don't just do a Bob be yourself yeah. be Finny, yeah, you know, yeah, and that's <sighs> Yeah, that's because because people think they want that, right, but then like when when it hits, then people are like, oh, I don't know that's there's something like that does isn't as electric and it's somebody has to be true a musician has to be true to themselves and that's true and you're and that includes being true to yourself as opposed to your past self even and, right and if you're not progressing and changing then what what exactly are you doing exactly right and in in its essence that that's what punk rock is right you know absolutely yeah the fact that like you know that there could be rules to it is like get out of here come on Right. <laughs> you know, like like D Boone said, punk is whatever we want it to be. Absolutely. And it's so again, it's interesting to hear because I feel like in any case where it's like, oh, these people were in other bands and like, you know, there's you know, a couple, maybe you know some of them, then you're immediately going to start making comparisons or whatever. But I think the band holds up very well on its own just as like it has its own voice, kind of almost immediately. Like it, it, it really kind of struck me. It, it, like I had to look to make sure that, like, this is the first release, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and that's. Do you think it was just something where it was the right place, right time? Were you feeling kind of like maybe it's time to let something loose? Uh, like what, what, where exactly were you? Just sort of a look to see how this works. But when you showed up, because there's always a chance it might not, right? I mean, what if it doesn't? What if it doesn't work? Uh, that, I mean, that was a very real possibility, you know, it, it could have yeah. just been horrible, uh, oh. but it was the complete opposite. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, I wrote, um, all of the lyrics for both records with the exception, uh, Jamie wrote one of the songs on the new record, uh, actually plays all the instruments on that track oh, interesting. himself as well because you know, he already knew the song and <laughs> Benny and I didn't. So we let, let him, uh, take the helm and, uh, that's, it's a great song. Um, you know, it, it, I've been, you know, writing lyrics for, you know, forever. So I had a ton of lyrics and I was really blown away by how well Finney was able to take those lyrics. Right. 
which weren't written to any melodies that uh, or songs that we had recorded. And it sounds like, you know, I mean, they just fit so well. It's very naturally, sure. Yeah. Yep. Well, and that's so. What's your approach to lyric writing? Do you are you a uh, you, do you sit down with sort of an idea in mind? Or are you more like a, a, a magpie picking pieces that, here and there? Like what's what's how do you approach uh, it? both? You know, sometimes uh, sometimes you, you know I'll sit down with an idea in mind, and and uh, the whole thing will come out. And a lot of times it's just observational things. Um, you know, hearing someone say something in a conversation and you're like, Oh right. wow. You know, yeah, and, yeah. and just kind of filing that away in the back of my mind and, and, um, uh, uh, you know, or, or late night thoughts or shower thoughts or whatever. And then, uh, eventually you sit down and go through those and you're like, Oh, these, these add up, you know? So do you, are, a little bit of, a little bit of both. Are you an old school, like writing down in an actual journal book or using like a, a note app or something along those lines? Uh, yeah, just the notes on my phone. Sometimes you, I'll jot it, jot something down on a piece of paper, but usually, you know, I've got my phone with me. So do, do you have Quick. any kind of organizational system or is it just like, there you go? Uh, it's more like, yep, just there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that works. That's how my brain works. So you almost end up like a Burroughs style cut up lyrics if you, <laughs> if you want to when it's like, when it's like that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and and you know, and sometimes uh, something will will hit me as like a title, and you know, I'll, right, I'll put that down, and then maybe go back and add to that um, type of thing. So you make the record, and then I I know there was kind of the the then, or, or we should say you do that that first recording, right? You, you do the first recording, comes together super quick. You know you got something going on, and then you have this initial this this, this initial try to, to to tour on it. Yep. I mean, you basically you know, stumbling blocks there with COVID and yeah, um, travel restrictions and um, you know my sister uh, got diagnosed with leukemia. Yeah. Uh, you know my <laughs> my cancer. Um, just, yeah, I mean, there were, there were so many stumbling blocks out of the gate. Plus, you know, all the, all the, um, just nightmares that we were having to try to put a record out our, on our own. Yeah. Uh, yeah, kind of, you know, the first, the first year, year and a half was, was tough, but once we got out and did that tour in May, uh, the band rocks the band is like solid on stage it's um you know and and, and uh the rapport is like we've been playing together forever type of thing and between all three of us um you know the tour in england in de december was fantastic really looking forward to getting out in april here yeah. and i'm hoping that we play a lot uh this year and um yeah, I mean the the big goal is to you know have this be my retirement gig. Right, know? right, right. Do it. Yeah, and 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 you can do it while you still can, right? <laughs> exactly. Yep. Well, and that's you know that's pretty inspiring too because a lot of folks you know as you might imagine a lot of people who listen to the show are musicians and you know, people have other things in their lives and they can sometimes struggle and they deal with the everybody's aging. You know, it, it turns out everybody's aging. Who knew? Uh, and, and, yep. you, and you have the problems and the and the opportunity that, that comes with that. And I think it's really interesting to have uh, a band with some degree of vitality, not to, again, speak ill of former bands and projects, but like it seems like you got something really cool cooking that has its own unique energy, apropos of just itself, rather than being, hey, everybody, here's the Vegas show with the... <laughs> <laughs> with like uh you know we're gonna now we're right. gonna do backdoor man and like whatever <laughs> yeah. uh and i hate to characterize it that way but i i, I think it, it does it, it is a distinction with a difference because uh, and i'm excited i think i get to see you actually like soon i can because i'm gonna go to chicago to that show i'm actually gonna make the drive to chicago for that um and 
I unfortunately did not see it last year. I had other things going on, but uh, just just from the, the live footage, it just seemed like it was like setting off a firecracker. You know, it was, it was off to the races immediately. Oh yeah, yep, right out of the gate. Um, yeah, the band has got tremendous energy on stage. You know, um, and, and you know, and we we do play some Husker stuff, and we play some some Mahones, and yeah. um, you know, we throw um, one UK subs tune in there, even you nice. know. Uh, Jamie kind of got unceremoniously dismissed from the band. Um, but, you know, Jamie's doing great. He's playing with anti Noah League and Four Foot Fingers. And... Yeah, he's doing fine. He's, he's... <clears throat> yep. And if he, if he sat there and got hung up on every uh, on everything that went wrong in rock and roll with uh, with people, I mean, he could. Yep. That way lies madness, right? But, you know, the, you know I, I guess the point I'm getting at is that we're not a we're not a nostalgia fan, right? You know, we're not we're not out there going like, hey, remember this? Yeah. Here we go. I'm going to play this big hit. You know, it's like you yeah. know, um, I love playing. Don't want to know if you're lonely because yeah. it's an incredible song. It's a killer's and, tune, yeah, sure. And, <laughs> and I, you know, and and Grant's not here to play it. You know. Yeah. Um. And that's kind of a way to honor him in a certain way too. You know, it's like you remember exactly, the memory. Yep. And it's uh, you know, and and you know, most of the the Husker stuff is uh, more skewed toward towards Grant songs because, you know, like I said, he's he was a great songwriter and a, and a dear friend. And like you said, it's a good way to honor him. Yeah. Um. But uh, you know, it's funny we added "Broken Home, Broken Heart" to the set. Oh, really? Uh, Bob Zen Arcade because I really love that song and I don't think anybody's played it live for quite some time and yeah. um, uh, and and some people thought it was a new Ultra Bomb song so because <laughs> they just did they didn't know that's awesome I mean that yep. speaks well of the band you know that would, it, it would you know it's it's it, they they sit nicely and again there's certain songs that like it makes sense within the context of the set because it matches what you're doing like no one's doing anything that's <laughs> yeah you know and, and we play makes no sense at all which yeah. you know bob that's a staple in bob's sets but yeah you know finney also covered it with his band you know it's it's um you know we're not going out there going like hey we're we're who's to do 2.0 right you know, that's, remember this yeah exactly yeah yeah well and yeah you got the husker dudes for that right so Right. <laughs> I love that, by the way. Still, after all these years, after three years, you tell me that. I was like, that's amazing. That's that, that's God, God tier cover band naming, frankly. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who's your dudes? Uh, so, but that's, there's a fine line between, yeah, kind of honoring the music and honoring the legacy and giving people like a kick for like, oh, cool, I didn't expect to hear that. Or like, maybe I did expect to hear that, but like, I, I get to like hear it in this new way. And then, right. and then being like, yeah, like the nostalgia, the Vegas stage show, so, so to speak. And I think there's, there's a fine line to it. And it feels like you guys are definitely on the like, let's honor this. And, you know, it, it wouldn't be something that you would necessarily expect people to have to hear every night or anything along those lines. But it's like, oh, you get a treat if you're into this music. You get, you get a treat from back in the day. Right. Uh, along with what's happening now. And I think that's also important for a band that's working and it's moving and it's changing and it's putting out stuff now because again it's you kind of have to be a little bit about the now if you're if you're moving forward oh absolutely yep so it's nice to have two records worth of material to to pick from now right um i mean i've already got enough lyrics for the third record ready to go That's so fantastic um uh, yeah hopefully we'll we'll find our way back into a studio before the end of the year for for another release next year and uh yeah, just keep growing it and evolving it and um, trying to get it out in front of more people and, and having them like it and listen to it. Of course, you know, the nature of, of the industry now, it's like, you know, it's like you need people to follow you on Spotify and, and yeah. follow you on Facebook and, and subscribe to your channel and uh, give you likes and make comments and all that stuff because that's how the algorithm works, you yeah, know? Yeah, sure does. Slave to the algorithm. Yeah. It's it's kind of depressing, frankly, if you stop yeah. and think about it. But it's yep. – yeah, I don't know if it's um, encouraging or not. 
<laughs> to, to hear someone at, at your level complain about that or not complain about that, but, but mention it. Um, it's, you know, the reality of the situation, you know, um, you know, and, and, and hopefully fans understand, like if, you know, if they want to support the artists that they love, you know, it's, um, you know, artists are, are not necessarily totally dependent on it, but it, yeah. it helps, you know, to get those likes, to get those followers, um, you know, Spotify is evil, but then pretty much everything is. I mean, they're all corporations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, 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 I'm glad you said it because sometimes people get really high on the horse about that. And it's like, well, all of these walled gardens are pretty atrocious, though. It's not like any of them are there, you know, as a public service or as, <laughs> to build community. That's all incidental. If that happens, that's, you know, that's right. not the primary goal. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I think the main thing is is that, you know, if a band is coming through your town and you like them, make sure you go to that show, you know, buy that ticket, right. buy something off their merch table, even if it's just uh, a sticker for two bucks, you know, because that money is going directly into their pocket at the end of the night so that they can get a hotel room. Right. Directly into the gas pump. Pay for gas <laughs> exactly. to get to the next gig, you know? No, it's it's vital, and it's all it's all the more important now than ever. And it, it's, Absolutely, yep. It's kind of weird that, you know, that's always been the case, but now it's like, no, it's like now the only way <laughs> to, to get anything through. Really? I mean, it's like, oh, yeah, here's your, you know, $12.45 for the, for the six-month period. Oh, thanks a lot, you know? Yep. Uh, yeah, you know, and, and um, you know, no, and, and, you know, the venues have all changed, too. They're all struggling for revenue streams. And yeah. uh, I think it's piracy when they demand to take a percentage of a band's Ugh. merch. You know, it's like all, all you did was set me up in a dark corner. <laughs> give me a holding table, you know? Right, exactly. Well, did you help sell the merch? No. Then, okay, then F off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's different. If they're going to supply somebody to sell the merch and then make sure that that person is taken care of, but just, if you're just going to show up and say, oh, by the way, where's my cut? You know? Um, you know, and there's, there's you know, room fees, and, and sometimes they're up front about it, and sometimes they're not. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's tough. It's a tough road out there, but you know, I wouldn't give it up for anything. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. There you go. But I think yeah, it's it's weird that in twenty twenty four we're talking about venues taking merch cuts. But I mean we'll continue talking about it until they cut that crap out, you know? I mean that's that's what it comes down to. Right. It's, it's just, that's that's the op whatever whatever the music world is that I want to be a part of, that is not it. To put it bluntly, so yep, I agree. Uh, pretty cool that you got uh, Metal Circus got that shout out from Chris Novoselic, uh, <laughs> some yeah. months back. I thought that I thought that was like a nice little oh, that's nice kind of moment. Some yep, I, for, I forget what it's terrible. I don't. It's like some punk magazine or something, right? But that, that kind of started a kind of cool conversation about that record. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's it's nice to get. Um, you know, shout outs from, from, uh, you know, people that, that we inspired and, you know, obviously they went on to a lot bigger things. Yeah. They did. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They did. All right. You know, um, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and hopefully it, it, it is enough to make people curious to the point where that they'll go out and check it out and we'll, we'll have, you know, new fans. Yeah. And, um, and hopefully they'll be big enough fans that they'll check out what Bob's doing or check out what I'm doing or, or, you know, look up Grant's catalog yeah, um, and just keep discovering. Yeah. And I feel like that's, if anything in the, the world we live in now where everything's just available all the time and everything's sort of at the same volume level for, you know, for better or for worse, that's kind of the upside to it is that people can just discover things when they go down a rabbit hole, right? Oh, this is linked to, Oh, what's, oh, have you heard this? Uh, this, this, one of these guys went and did this band. Oh, let's check what this is, you know? Yep. And that's lovely. There's nothing wrong with that at all. And that, that's, that's like the good part of the internet. That's not the commodified <laughs> wall garden crapola. If you will. Yep. I mean, I've discovered all sorts of great new music to me and, 
uh, over the last year and a half, just, you know, listen, finding something on Spotify and then letting the algorithm kind of take over type of thing based on my likes right? or whatever that means. But, uh, you know, I've discovered a lot of really cool stuff and that, you know, like I said, a lot of it was new to me. And of course, then you're like, oh, wow, these guys are really great. Then you look and it's like, oh, they haven't put anything out in 14 years. <laughs> you know? Long gone. Yeah. But, you know, it's, you know, but I still like it. It's getting to hear you know, still. I, I, yeah. You know, and I, I follow them. Yeah. You know, and uh, things like that. But also discovering, you know, new bands that are out. Sure. Um uh, going to a show tonight in Minneapolis. It's uh, uh, Danny from Detroitson. He's he oh, cool. has a band the, called the, the Crosses. Crosses. Yeah, I, I know. I, yeah, of course I know Kaminsky. It's a, they're they're great. They're um, yeah, that's that's going to be a great show. I don't know who's playing with them, but it's going to be a great show. I can tell you. Well, there's six other bands on the bill. <laughs> uh, all all local punk bands. So uh, I'm excited go. to go and and you know see what see what's out there see what uh you know um one of my goals for the year besides you know touring as much as i can with with ultra bomb is trying to to get to see more shows and and more you know support my local scene uh try to get to more festivals and you know and yeah. and you know hear bands that that you know I may not get a chance to see because they're not coming through Minnesota right. type of thing. Right. You, you don't already necessarily know. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I mean, God, you give lessons on that, please. <laughs> by, yep. by all means, it's, that's, that's the way you should be. I mean, if you really do love music, then like that's, that's how it ought to be. That, and, Cause you, right. can, you can really see, I think it isn't a one size fits all situation, but you can really see what a band does when you see what they do live. I think. Oh, I totally agree. You know, and, and some bands you might not necessarily think their studio record was that great, but then you see them live and you're like, holy yeah. shit balls, you know? Um, you know, and plus the other thing is just meeting like-minded people, you know, punk really is a community, you know, there's this, uh, a lot of, a lot of friends I've made over the last year and, and, uh, people have met them, you know, looking forward to meeting more people and, you know, taking, making them part of my community, you know? Yeah. Cause there's a give and take to it. Right. I mean, like the idea of that, okay, I'm going to check out, see what you're up to. Then I'm going to get on stage and do my thing and you can check out and see what I'm up to. And everybody gets to be part of this greater th- thing that's greater than all those things put together. Right. Yeah. That's, you know. I, I wish there was more, <laughs> I wish there was more of a way to get that over other than just like the experience of doing it. Cause I feel like people are being trained kids, especially it's like, Oh, just screens. Everything happens on the internet. Now everyone's just an influencer and you know, making funny right. stuff, quote unquote, funny stuff <laughs> for the algorithm. <laughs> right. Exactly. And I think there's you an know, immediacy and, and, to and, it. You know, um, and part of that mindset is like, if you can't, hook them with the first five seconds of your song, they're on to something else. Yeah, you know? forget it. It's over. It's over, Johnny. Yeah, no, it's it's a, but, it's a uh, weird situation that way, but it doesn't exactly reward nuance. Let's put it that way. But Right. You know, before the the internet, uh, you know, there every every town had a club and you know, a band came through. Everybody went to see it because that's how you, you found it, you know, and now people... Yeah, you know, and obviously, I mean, I'm 65, and a lot of those old Husker fans are, you know, around my age, and they don't want to go out, you know, and I don't blame them. That's their life. They, you know, you you live how, however it makes you happy. So right. uh, for me, going out to, to see live music makes me happy, and uh, I guess it's, you know, my my YOLO is stronger than my FOMO. So. <laughs> well, and, and you in a situation where, you know, there's something to be said for, yeah, just being into whatever you're into. But if you're not careful in this world, like there's a commodification to that of just making that a closed circuit that you're just only hearing things or experiencing things that are things that are you, things you already know or the things that are like the things you already know. So at that point it becomes a, a you know, it becomes a potential problem because you're closing yourself off to new experiences and finding out new things that 
you know, maybe it would sound like it's coming from Mars or whatever. And you wouldn't, you wouldn't know. Cause you're just sitting here like, you know, checking out some stuff that's two or right. three steps away from where it was before. And that's the, the rant, the chaos effect element of, of music and, and creativity in general. I mean, right. Well, you know, I mean, you kind of summed up a big problem right there. It's, you know, too many people live, live in their own bubbles where they're just yeah. reinforced by what, they are comfortable with and they don't want to be pushed out of that comfort zone. And so then you, you know, you end up in the echo chamber and, and uh, you know, that's not just music. That's all sorts of other shit. That's bigger than, yeah, look at than politics. Uh, most people realize, but yeah, if you look at politics, it's like, that's wow. That's, that's rough to put, to put it bluntly very rough i mean not not that that's like a bold assertion it's going to be someone's epiphany and from this show that oh by the way yep. <laughs> confirmation bias is a hell of a drug <laughs> exactly yep yeah you know um i mean i read a lot of news i read i try to look at both sides just to have an informed opinion you know it's hard to have a con like you know, a conversation with somebody if you don't know where they're coming from, yeah, even if you yeah. disagree with it. But it's not like it's an argument between two people. It's it's you know it's a discussion on a topic, and um, you know if you can approach it that way, you may not change any minds, but maybe you know they'll grow to understand you better. You right. know, and and that understanding is sort of key towards moving forward past breaking any kind of. Bubble for people is that, right? You know, it's 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 something that I think everybody should think about at least a little bit these days because it's 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 a it's a rough path if it continues too far further down how it is now. I yep, I agree. We need more understanding. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. So, change up. Speaking of uh, classified ads with Peter Paul, Mary, and Husker Du, do you ever like? talk to like any of the people that were like influenced by Husker like so like Black Francis or you know whatever that fells from like therapy or torch or any of those do they ever you know, seek you out uh yeah I, I, I met Adam from Swerve Driver um oh, nice. he's a great guy um I believe I will be seeing uh we're going to be in Clisson, France at the end of June. Nice. And, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure therapy is planned. So I'll have an opportunity to meet those guys. Uh, you know, obviously Dave Grohl, I've, I've met numerous times and, and he is um, very quick to point out no, no Husker do, no Foo Fighters. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I you know it's um, <laughs> Taylor Hawkins used to to sit there and laugh and go like, and I wonder what you're thinking here, sitting here watching us do pretty much what you guys did, but we're doing it in front of all these people and we're just a bunch of fuck knuckles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy sense of self there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, but it's you know I mean it's, it it has to be a complicated series of emotions because it's like, well, it's, in a way it's kind of cool that you like lit this flame. Right. But it's, right. Absolutely. Yep. But it's also like, you know. yeah, it looks nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it's like, uh, I don't know, all the, um, you know, baseball, uh, professional athletes in the fifties <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> before yeah. television contracts blew up, you know? Yeah. They all had to have uh, off season jobs to, to make their livelihood and, it's uh it's crazy yeah and you know it's weird how it's weird how things are remembered now because i feel like first of all we're kind of dealing with a a, a point in time where everything is excavated and re-examined uh, for various reasons and uh -huh. then also it's a time where things are kind of given their day in the sun that maybe they didn't get at the time or sometimes just in a different way and I, I I remember specifically when the Azerad book came out, right? And I remember we talked about this last time, so excuse me if you if we if we did, but uh, I I thought that was a pretty good. Like I liked all those bands. It was none none of that was new to me, right? But of course I'm me. I'm a freaking nerd. Of course <laughs> I'm a nerd for all this punk rock stuff, 
And right. I was just like, wow, it's cool to have all these bands that like I wouldn't have thought of like having these different chapters dedicated to these different unique bands that all kind of had their own voice and their own built in world. But in a way, when I was thinking about it, it's like, well, imagine, you know, I was a little bit younger and I didn't know any of these bands. I didn't work at a record store for minimum wage and discover all these bands on my own. That that is actually a great introduction that like, hey, you could just like pick a record by any one of these bands and see if you like it and kind of get a level test. So that was like the level test then. Right. And that gets that gets a bunch of people listening to it that, again, are, are just like how like, there's a few bands. I think there's going to be like there's going to be someone every year that discovers Minor Threat or the Ramones or whatever. Right. That's And it's brand new to them. They're 15. And it's, this is the only thing they ever want to listen to going forward. And I feel like who's like, like one of those bands that people are going to yep. find it and get obsessed and they're going to react with it as if it was happening right then and there. And... Uh, I just read a thing from a friend last week that was um, saying, like, yeah, I was never a Misfits fan. You know, I thought they were okay. But, you know, my 15-year-old daughter discovered them, and she made me listen to them, and now I fucking love the Misfits. <laughs> That's awesome. The kid, the kid guy. That's great. Dude, yeah. that, that band, that band took me a while. Like I was like, uh, this is stupid for like a long yep. time. And then I was like, oh, I was being closed minded. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> like, yep. Well, you know, um everybody goes through that. Yeah. You know, you get you get locked into what you originally get turned on to, and then hopefully you'll, you know, keep evolving and keep discovering new stuff. You know, like I said, I I love finding stuff that's new to me. Um, you know, I've really have gotten back into listening to a lot of punk and hardcore and, and, uh, sure. you know, that's, that's music that speaks to my soul type of thing. Um, but you know, I'm also listening to sad country and, you know, alt country and stuff like that. And there's a lot of really great stuff out there to, to always be discovered. And, um, you know, artists that you'll all of a sudden you'll hear their lyrics and go like, wow, holy yeah. shit, that's some next level stuff there, you know? Well, what you're describing, I used to describe it to you. For me, that was, you know, that was the best part of working at a record store was that like you could find like, oh, yeah, look at like I thought I didn't like jazz, but listen to these records. These are amazing. This is blowing my mind right now. And I didn't, you know, yep. turns out like, oh, yeah, this you know, the, in the reggae section, like this stuff's fantastic. You know, like I said, country, like I thought it. Man, I was so predisposed to dislike country because I was I was dealing with whatever country music was popular then, and then then it was like, oh, all these old country artists are freaking awesome. This this is this yep. is fantastic, and you get to yep. have that sort of eye opening experience and being like, okay, well maybe I should have given this more of a chance. And I think everybody has that opportunity now. The question is, are they going to be incited to do that? And that's, right. That's something we're probably not going to sort out on this show, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I do, I, I, I miss record stores, you know, I miss yeah, yeah. going and hanging out and, you know, and that, that, yeah, you, you would you'd just be in there flipping through the racks and looking at records. It's like, you didn't have any money, but you were there and hanging out and friends were there and you knew the clerks and they'd put stuff on and all of a sudden you'd be like, who's this? Yeah. You know? So, yeah. That is one thing I miss, but I also understand that that probably is, you know, I mean, there, there's still a few really great shops out there, but not like it used to be where like every mall had a record store type of thing, you know? Right. And there was always, well, ideally at every store there was, there was like the one person that was like, Oh, you like this? Oh yeah. You should check this out. You should, you know, like the, the knowledge holder, the wizard, if you will. Right. You know, like I, I definitely... Although you got to understand, I worked at the fourth coolest out of four record store in uh, Berkeley. <laughs> so take it that what you will. <laughs> well, there you go. But I definitely yeah. had people that picked up that that you know that first Foo Fighters record and be like, "Yeah, yeah, this is good." Have you heard of Scooter though? <laughs> and, yep. th and they'd be like, "No, what's that?" And I'm like, "Oh, you should you should pick that up too. You like it." Yep. And, and just like you know, planting the seeds, if you will. That, yeah, maybe they'll take root. Maybe they won't. Uh, but uh, starting that fire, so to speak, just makes my metaphors. Yep. Yeah. You know, and I also, you know, realize that if, you know, talking to people that are under 45, they, there's a really good chance they have no idea who Hoosker Do is. And that's fine. I don't expect everybody to, to, 
you know, revere the band that I used to be in. Um, but, you know, if they are curious enough to check it out and they like it, that's great. Um, Needs to be on like a TikTok dance or something, I guess. I don't know what it is. Yep. But I think it's there, there's always flashes. Of, well, all right, look, look at this, right? I just talked to um, Kid Congo Powers. That was the last episode I did. And we were talking yep. about how on the, the Netflix Wednesday Adams show that they use the cramp song. And, mm-hmm. and suddenly yep. all these kids are like, hey, the cramps are pretty good. It's like, oh, yeah, no kidding. All right. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's fantastic, you know, and they get to experience it through a medium that, you know, again, it isn't their parents trying to foist the cramps on them, which I, that's a scenario that's hilarious to me. But, <laughs> yep. you know, like they, they get to engage with it on its own terms and where it is and like be like, wow, this is awesome. Let me hear more of this. I think there are, there's more of an opportunity for those kind of moments, especially when. A lot of people from punk rock and the DIY world, et cetera, are in these positions of being able to do stuff with that, like like be production designers on movies and like music directors and things along those lines. Right. Like there was a, you know, like that movie Nope, right? There's this one guy uh, and everybody remember the Jeez Lizard t-shirt, which was great, but there's also like a Wipers t-shirt in there. There's there's like, all, like there's a bunch of other just kind of surreptitious things and it's almost just this weird chaos energy of what people do and don't connect with that uh, right that, 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 it's, it's beautiful in a way it can be maddening if you're trying to figure it out but it can be beautiful in its way for sure string theory string theory right absolutely <laughs> so you know i think that getting back to the conversation of like people kind of like knowing you know what what a band does and like kind of building expectations for that it, it struck me again just and i i, I know this but like I was like, oh, you know, I'm talking to Greg again. Let's like go through like listen to these old records, and you guys were always so ahead of what was happening, but almost to your own detriment. Like in, it, like Devo was right, where it's almost like a little bit too ahead. <laughs> and it seems like you, you guys all had a very good sense of self about all of it, and you knew that whatever you're doing is what you wanted to do. But right, I sometimes find it interesting to go back and okay, as a for instance, like there's a lot of Roger Ebert. Here's the movies that he like totally panned that are objective masterpieces, like things along those lines. Do, do you remember any situations where people were like, "Oh, Oscar's finally misstepped with this one," where it was like, "All right, dude, whatever." Like, what any egregious ones that we can just sort of laugh at in retrospect? Uh, you know, it's interesting reading through comments um, when somebody posts something about Candy Apple Gray or or Warehouse, yeah. um, and so many people will come out with like, oh, that's my favorite record of theirs. And then other people will have their own criticisms of it. And, um, but you know, and look, it, it, people are still talking about it. You After know? all these years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, with, with Husker, you know, we were, you know, Bob and, and Bob still is a, he's, he's a songwriting machine. You know, it's yeah. it, the guy is so prolific. Uh, you know, it took Grant a little bit longer to, to write songs, but I think, you know, everything, most everything that he came up with was like really solid. Uh, you know, it took me a lot longer, uh, especially being in, in the company of two really great songwriters to, you know, have, have kind of have the confidence to, to step forward with stuff and, and, and the hope and belief that, that uh, you know they put as much into it as they put into their own stuff. Be the George Harrison, right? <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, you know, with Ultra Bomb, it's 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 a it it is this collaborative group effort. We write all of the music together. Um, you know, I write I write the lyrics independently, and Finney makes them work. Um, yeah. You know, getting back to Husker, we were also because of that. Um, the prolific songwriting, we were always touring the record that we were about to record. Right. As opposed to the record that just came out, which oftentimes threw people for like a big loop. It's like, yeah, I went to see you guys. I didn't know any of the songs. (laughs) What are these songs? Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) You know? And in a way, you know, Warehouse was the first record that we did tour where we played the whole record. The whole thing, yeah. Which... You know, in retrospect, was kind of a misstep on our part because then, you know, it took that unpredictability out of a 
Husker show where people are like, oh, well, they're just playing the record in order. Yeah. And so then we started to mix that up and, and mix in, you know, actually throwing in a, like really early stuff just because we wanted to, to play it. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's the, it's the continual evolution of, of three individuals as artists and musicians and, and, you know, just, you know, getting better at, at what they do. Right. So, right. And, and you, uh, you have to, and, uh, and a lot of times people are, are locked in on what they think that you yeah. You know, what, what they get locked in on a point where you mattered the most to them and they don't want you to evolve past that because to them, that was the pinnacle of what you did. Yeah. And they're always going to have that. There's going to be something very special about that to them. It's going to be a significance right. to it, but that, that cuts both ways. Right. Cause it's, it, it can, well, if you're not careful, it'll close you off to new experience, but by the same token, it's, you know, it's obviously it's great to, to reach someone creatively and uh, for sure but it can, yep. it can be a double-edged sword to put it bluntly right you know and, and also you know kind of the flip side of that is a lot of artists pick up on that and then they get locked into a formula you know it's like okay well this is what this is what everybody loves this is what they want and they kind of get stuck on a thing and they just keep re-recording the same record yeah. you know different song titles maybe a slightly different solo, um, you know, <laughs> exactly. change the words a little bit, but it's, you know, Give them all what the they records want. are the same. Yeah. You know? And I'm okay with artists evolving, you know? Yeah. It's hard to, I may mean, not necessarily like what they evolve. Oh, into, sure. But you know, it's not up to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, because you're engaged with the art on the level of, of where it's at. And, and, and there can be artists that I adore they're uh, you know life defining artists i'm like oh yeah i don't listen to those records they're not for me you know that's fine but like mm-hmm. they're but they, are they changing and doing different stuff and trying this yes absolutely and 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 that's if you really if you're not just engaging with the art on the face of it for what it is and what it means to you right then and there if you're interested in the artist i think you have to kind of give a little leeway i mean look at iggy pop right he's put out some just horrifically bad records like bad bad who cares he's Iggy Pop man <laughs> right exactly <laughs> he's always gonna be the dude from the Stooges you know you gotta, you gotta have freaking uh like the passenger and like lust for life you're gonna be mad about Iggy Pop putting out a bad record get out of here let's hear your riffs come on right thank you and, and <laughs> you know listen to it and if you like it then great and if you don't like it then you know maybe his next record will be something that you do like he put out that uh that post-pop depression record a few years ago it was awesome i was like this is great i love everything about this and and but then and then he put out some like light jazz thing that it was like it sounds like you're having fun bud good for yep. you you know good for you you should uh how do you feel about the uh, this is not like a guitar effects podcast as you well know <laughs> but how do you feel about like the world of like guitar effects coming to like the bass world. And the reason why I ask this is because uh, there's like, you know, chorus on bass, right? There, 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 there's been like a strong history for that. You know? but yep. w- w- when that came in, what, what, what's your, what's your thought process and effects within music, but like with bass specifically, I guess is what I'm got at, driving at. Uh, well, I guess if it works for whoever's using, using it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's fine. Um, I mean, I, just go for a little overdrive myself. Um, but you know, like I said, it's, it's, if that, if that allows that particular bass player to, to, you know, express themselves better than I'm for it. You know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I (laughs) I follow a couple of bass pages on Facebook and it's ridiculous how, you know, people get into the argument of like, (sighs) Oh, you use a pick. It's like, well, fuck it. Like, do play how you want to play, and express yourself how you want to express yourself. You know, and there's there's plenty of threads about effect pedals and things like that. Um, you know, and and, and I'll read through them because I'm, I'm you know, I want to learn stuff too. Sure. Um, yeah. You know, it, my way isn't isn't necessarily the the right way, but it's the right way for me. So, 
Um, but I'm open to, you know, experimentation and, and, and expression. And, and so I don't have a problem with it. There's such an orthodoxy with bass specifically that I just, I, I don't quite understand that, that. Again, I think you've got the right take on this, which is that whatever works for the player, you know, what does it sound good? Yes. Great. If it doesn't, then, you know, all right, that isn't, so, that isn't so good. But the idea that, yeah, you have to play with your fingers or you have to play with a pick, like, just like whatever works, man, like whatever works. Yeah. I yeah, it's, yep. it's weird. I mean, I do it? both, and sometimes I do both at the same time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly, exactly. Uh, how do you feel about? I feel like New Day Rising is is the one that everyone really kind of fixates on, right? Uh, the the song or the LP? Uh, uh, the uh, so the LP. Well, I guess both, but <laughs> mm-hmm. but but you know, you got like he's like you know. Uh, books about ufos and like power line like there, there's there's a lot of jammers on there but there and there's yep. also um like celebrating summer right there, there's like and, and and is is that something where when you guys were making new day rising was that was that was bob and grant was that a good experience like to make that record uh ultimately because it feels like they were kind of at loggerheads a little bit uh yeah, a little bit, uh, but you know, it, it, that was the last record that we recorded with Spot, right? R.I.P. Uh, and uh, the first record that we recorded with Spot, not in California, we recorded that one in Minneapolis. So, right. um, you know, being home in Minnesota, you know, kind of gave us, excuse me, a little bit more time to, um, you know, go home and kind of decompress and not have as much pressure uh because of of time restraints in the studio and things like that um you know i think you know like books about ufos in particular the the piano part you know bob's concern was like well how are we gonna do that live we don't have a piano right. player, yeah you know? <laughs> exactly, yeah uh, but we did play it live and it was great so you know there again it's it's kind of allowing ourselves to evolve um You know, 80, 85 was a, was a really great year for, um, for what we did in the studio with New Day Rising and, and, uh, Flip Your Wig. So it was a big year for music. It was, there's a lot of great, uh, great things coming out there. I mean, yep. there usually is. Oh, you, Obama you know plays New Day Rising, by the way. Oh, really? Awesome. Yep. Very I, cool. I introduce it, it, tell people to sing along. So right. I encourage people to sing along. Yes. Excellent. That's awesome. <laughs> so it, it, it's uh, and again, R.I.P. Spot. That's, you know, cause, yes. Because that's saying like that's uh, it's very sad to hear his passing. But I feel like Spot had a very um, there was a sound, a distinctive sound to, to records that, that, that Spot did, and it's notable to me that it, it's sort of people now attribute it to like, oh, it's that <laughs> it's that eighties SSD sound. It's like. Well, that's because Spot recorded them because it was, it was, there, right. was a, there was a guy. There was a guy, that, and he's and he's the guy that has that sound. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I I was there. Yeah. A, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say. I think. I think you know. Um, Spot often gets a bad rap because of the sound of of you know not only you know our records but other records and yeah. I don't think it's you know it's it's. He's an easy scapegoat, but he's, you know, he's also has to work with what he has to work with, you know? Right. Um, and, and dealing with the fact that, again, when I was saying earlier about everything kind of being at the same level, right? Like having like a punk rock record on a punk rock budget uh, up against, you know, Led Zeppelin <laughs> or whatever. Well, yeah, of course it's going to you know the, the 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 budgets on those records are like wildly different it's probably the best way to say it you know right and, and yep. that's and then it's that's something that well they had that it's a documentary about hypnosis the the guys who made all the record covers like the pink floyd oh yeah like, i haven't i haven't watched that yet it's on my my watch list so i want to check that out it, it first of all it's really good and secondly it's also just like oh yeah like you had to like go to like that place 
to go take that picture to be on the record. Like it was sort of like, yeah, there's no such thing as, you know, Photoshop or anything along those lines. You had to like go to these, these extravagant budgets literally just to make the record cover. Right. And, and there's a great, not to spoil it for you, but there's, there's a great piece. I think it's the fellow from Oasis talking to his daughter about record covers. And like, she just had no frame of reference for what it was he was talking about at all. And then he kept kind of going through it and going down the line and be like, yeah, well, you know when you look up a band on Spotify or whatever it is, and you see that really small little picture <laughs> just of that song? <laughs> That's a record cover, right? you know. So it's something along those lines. It was sort of like, was, but there was a whole winding path to get down to it. It was, it was like, oh man, that's that's that is how people engage with it now, right? as opposed to being like, again, me coming from the era of like wow what does that sound like let's look like that's crazy like that's a crazy looking record cover i yep. wonder what it sounds like i guess i will have to buy it and find out <laughs> exactly yep <laughs> uh anyway yeah th- th- that that's an, an that's an ad apparently for that hypnosis documentary but it's really good so you should check it out <laughs> yep uh and also blow up those thumbnails so you get a better look at them. exactly some of them are pretty cool looking <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, and sometimes it's like, what is that? What is? And then it's like, oh, like, uh, it's it, like you have to like look at the physical record cover. I mean, I think it's thing is an arcade, right? Where it's like, it's like it was a junkyard or something, right? It, it's like, well, what is that? Yeah, it's a scrapyard in Minneapolis. But I always remember the colors of that one the most. It was like it's got this kind of um, what's the color scheme? It's like uh, not pastel, well, but kind of muted. Uh, like. Uh, let's see what did Grant use. Um, I don't think he used pastels. It might have been like Grant. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not pastels, but it's definitely got like there's whatever. Anyway, it's very unique looking. It is what I'm what I'm driving at. Sorry, yep, I'm, I'm failing this right now. But uh, and, and you know, and like Metal Circus, where you got like the room and it's like backwards and stuff. Like that's you know, all these very iconic looking records that <laughs> it's hard to do a record cover. You know, it's hard to name a band. By the way, congratulations on Ultra Bomb. Good band name and one word band name. Amazing. Yeah. You know, and actually um, in December I met um, Jamie's friend uh, Grant, another Grant, oh, Jimmy Grant. Uh, who lives in London. And he's the guy that came up with the, the name Ultra Bomb. And then he's like, well, to be honest, I thought Ultra Bomb was a great name because in case you guys sucked, it would work both <laughs> ways. <laughs> <laughs> you can get some real shark so sandwich like, style headlines out of that good one. Good sure. point. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This is a two word review. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> well, but it's it's oh god, band names are just like a, they're all taken, you know. So it's 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 and it's uh, it, yep. it, 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 was it just an immediate? Everybody's like, "Yep, that sounds good." Uh, well, you know the. Um, the, the album cover on Time to Burn, I, uh, a friend of mine took a photo of my daughter, Coco, that was up on Facebook, and he put the atomic bomb in the background. Yeah. I just happened to have that, and when Jamie was like, how about Ultra Bomb? I'm like, oh, my God, I got it. Yeah, you got the that bomb. photo, and they're like, that's it. <laughs> it that's took the me, title and the, and the album cover. So it, it took me a couple of times to be like, oh, she doesn't have a cigarette. Okay. Like, for some reason, <laughs> I had in my mind it was a cigarette. It was, I was, I was like, oh, no, it's not a cigarette. Yep. But maybe that's just because so, of the explosion nearby. Anyway, it's uh it was nice to to have my daughter on the on the cover, but uh you know, that's that's actually one of the things that, that people didn't like about the first record. They didn't they thought the cover didn't didn't match or whatever, or that we were trying to be, you know, look like we are nineties band or something. I don't know, <laughs> stupid stuff like that. But okay. I mean you know, like you said, making oh. record covers is not easy. So it certainly isn't, and everyone's got an opinion after it's already done, right? It's yep. Like, it's like okay, uh, what are what's the um, what's the new one? I don't think I think I've seen that. Have you seen the one for the new one? I don't think. Uh, yeah, we we put up a teaser on Facebook with the album art. Um, so it's it's a drawing, uh, done by a Canadian artist uh, named uh, Sebas Thoreau. Uh, who's got a company called Stereo Design? He's done. Oh yeah, you know, so, oh yeah, he's, this he's is done cool. I did quite see a few um, record jackets. So yeah, this is cool looking. I I, I have seen this before. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, yeah. That's, uh... And I think it, you know, uh, kind of 
fits the mood of the record pretty well. Is it on, on, the, on the moodier side? Uh, it's a little darker than the first record, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, but rocks. It totally rocks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a uh, that's exciting stuff. I, I'm I'm. I'm interested to see you guys play it live. And again, that's going to be real soon. That's like a uh, April 12th or something, right? Is the Chicago Yeah. Show? Just a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. Less than two weeks now. Yeah. I'm, I'm that'll be, that'll be, uh, that'll be cool to see you guys play. I, I regret not having seen you, uh, last year, but unavoidable, unfortunately. Um, so, okay. So you, you got the records coming out in June. So what, so it's moodier. Okay. What else, what else about, about this? Yeah. Like what's, so uh... June 7th was the earliest we could get it into distribution. Okay. But uh, like I said, we should have copies of the record for sale at our merch table on the road with uh, the gimmies right. all up and down the Eastern seaboard. Yeah, yeah. Coming to and, uh, and of course, here in Minneapolis, when we play the Hook and Ladder on May 9th with the Silent Treatment and another uh, fantastic young band called Big Salt out of Minneapolis. It's um, That's a good band, man. an all woman band and they totally rock. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a shameless good, plug there. Yeah, well, hey, that's that's it's it's a give and take, my man. It's a give and take. <laughs> yep. Well, and uh, I think it's it, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to see you guys get back out there. I know logistics are are, are totally nuts. I, I, what do you what do you feel like is the best representation of uh, of the new record? Like, what what song is the one you like you're most excited about? Oh man, there's there's like I said, eleven songs. It's hard to hard to pick one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There there's a lot of songs I'm really excited about. All so. right, there you go. Very diplomatic answer. I appreciate that. What that? <laughs> it's a that's a diplomatic answer. I appreciate that. Yep. Um. Yeah, we'll be releasing a single prior to. Um, the, the record coming out I'm not sure exactly which one we're gonna go with yet but we'll okay. you know, we'll, we'll get a couple of singles out there and hopefully people will, will like it and follow us and <laughs> follow on all the various social medias yeah absolutely uh-huh yep that's, that's what you got that's what you gotta do yep how did you man there's no easy way to talk about it, but how did you find out about the cancer, dude? Like, how, how did that come to pass? I well, I was lucky. It was just uh, from a routine blood test on just like a annual physical type thing, and they're like, "You have a really high PSA," and I'm like, uh, "Public service announcement? <laughs> what is that?" So it's a <laughs> prostate specific antigen, and they had me follow up with a urologist. And, uh, that's what led to it. So, um, I was lucky it was, you know, you know, prostate cancer is one of those things that if you're, um, if you have a prostate at some point in your life, you will have prostate cancer. The majority of people don't die from that. Right. Um, it's not when you get it, wet, but it, it's, it's slow growing, uh, it can spread and typically a lot of times when people find out, uh, you know, it's already spread to other organs or, or lymph nodes or whatever. And so I got lucky. I got, you know, everything was, uh, according to my doctors, everything was contained in the prostate. Uh, everything's been good since then. You know, it's been a few years. And I guess the only the only downside is when I jump around on stage, I tend to pee my pants a little bit. But, <laughs> I can deal with that. Hey man, you're sacrificing for your art, right? Exactly. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I should I should Could laugh. Be worse. That's terrible. Could be worse. That's terrible. We're, no, we're we're glad you're here. I mem- I remember when I when I heard that that was just, that was just devastating, and that's and and that's also the whole thing of. You know, rocking while aging, it's going to happen and, and no one's invincible. You know, it's easy, right. it's easy to, to feel like that might be the case. It's like, no. Yeah. You know, I also think it leads to, like I said earlier, my YOLO is stronger than my FOMO. So right. 
Um, you know, I want to get out there and, and play and, you know, do what makes me happy and, and, um, uh, hopefully other people will I'll make other people happy too. So, yeah. And that's, that's the key. And that's one of the reasons why it's so okay. exciting to see, uh, to see you guys just getting out there, getting out there and doing it because it's, you know, it, it's the kind of thing where it seems very celebratory. It seems like a real freaking you know, a celebration of, of, of all the great things that music brings to you. And, 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 exactly. and that's wonderful. And that, that's, I love that, man. And, and, and to put it bluntly, I'm glad you're here. Well, thanks. I'm glad, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I works. appreciate you. Uh, so any parting words before we adjourn for another three years? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> whatever it was <laughs> go see those live shows stick around for all the bands buy yeah. something from the merch table follow your favorites on all of their socials show them some love and if ultra bomb is one of those bands thank you very much i totally appreciate it and same thing with um um uh, fans out there right. it's always nice meeting people but you know um it 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 means a lot to me when people come up and tell me that that something that I did, you know, 40 years ago really helped them. And that means a lot. So hopefully I'll, I can only help continue to help people with what I'm doing. And uh, that's that. I'll include all the, uh, the tour dates and the show notes and everything. So folks that can uh, find out everything on their own and uh, go see you play. Cause it looks like it's going to be a hell of a run. And that's, that should be, those shows should be a good time. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting out and playing again. Greg Norton, thanks so much, man. It's always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for coming yep. back. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in like two weeks, I guess, or less than two weeks, even. Jesus. So sounds great. Can't wait to 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 meet you in person. Sounds good, Greg. All right. Take Cheers. care, brother. Yep. Bye. Greg Norton. Oh, what a great dude. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. He's a he's an awesome fella, and and I am glad that he's here. I'm glad I got to say that. All right, so let's play. I cannot play something off of the new record. But I'm gonna play. Uh, I'm gonna play something off the first record. So this this is a uh, this is time to burn.
sense at all Whiskers Whisker do before that we had a little ultra bomb off the first record because I was radically unprepared for anything on the new record <laughs> but they have a new record coming out that is well it's the one after that isn't it folks but it's ultra bomb coming to a town near you hopefully with me first in the gimme gimme's and defiant and I will be seeing that show in Chicago. So if you're at that show, come say hi. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a uh, punk rock legend, Greg Norton. Nice fella. Great having him on. Name of the show, of course, is Code New Transport Tonic Reversal. Thank you so very much for listening to it. This show airs typically Thursdays, 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Streaming live, YouTube, and Twitch. Podcast it later. Always free, no ads, no sponsors. No kidding. All archives available at protonicreversal.com for free. Always. But if you like the show and you want to get an episode sooner, $1 a month at patreon.com slash protonicreversal will gladly achieve that goal and help support the show. It's much appreciated. What else? What's coming up? Oh, so much stuff coming up, man. Uh, Ryan Patterson of Coliseum. Mr. And Mrs. Photo Crimes coming up next. God, Rick Sims of the Digits. Oh, the so much stuff voice. coming up. Uh, just stay tuned on all the social media sites. You know, you know what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks everyone for listening to the show. I appreciate it. Coming up in 10 years, man. 10 years this month. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I don't take any of it lightly. Let's see. Anything else? No, I think that's pretty good. Uh, Go see Ultra Bomb. Greg Norton's a treasure. Stay safe out there. Check out on later. Route 128, in the dark and lonely. I got my radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the... It's the end of radio!
Radio, the last announcer plays the last record. The last what? Leaves the transmitter, circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? broadcasting if there's no one there to receive it's the end of radio as we come to the close of our broadcast day 